So you've been in Electron App as a client for your web app and you've realized that if you kill your web server, so if the web server isn't available because it either has problems or users offline, then your app will look like this most likely, which is not ideal because right now it can't fetch HTML, CSS or JavaScript, which gives us two options. Either bundle your HTML, CSS and JavaScript in the app, which will make updating over the air a lot more annoying because you can't separately update the UI and the backend or what we will do, which is basically just enable caching of assets so that the app will still fall back to cached assets in case the server isn't reachable for whatever reason. And to understand what we'll do here, we'll first of all try to illustrate it. So right now we've got our Electron app and our server and Electron basically makes a request to the server and hopes for a response and then it renders the response. If there is no response then Electron cannot display anything and we run into an issue. So what we'll do is we'll basically add a middleman in here and we'll basically make all of our requests through the service worker. Then the service worker will forward them to the server. The server will respond. The service worker will save it to a little cache it's got. So let's just say this right here is our cache and then it will basically just return the response from the server. So we are of course adding some latency, but we are adding a little fallback behavior because if the server doesn't respond and the service worker has already saved something from the cache, then it can basically just return the cached value to the Electron app instead of the value from the server, which it now didn't get. So what we can do here is basically say, every request that comes from the server will be cached. So we always have the most up-to-date data that we've gotten at any point in time. But if the server doesn't respond, we'll just use the most up-to-date cache item so that the UI is still usable to some extent. This can of course have issues with apps that are really dependent on API calls, which you can but don't need to cache by the way. But it is always better to at least render something than render nothing because the server isn't reachable at all. So let's get into implementing this now. And to start implementing, we'll first of all need to register our service worker, which I will do in this Vite React app in my main.tsx. You can basically do this in any of your JavaScript files in your frontend. Just try to do it as early as possible, just so that there aren't any dependencies that might cause your service worker not to render. So to get started, we we'll first of all need to check if the service worker is in the navigator. So basically just check if your browser supports service workers, or in this case, if your Electron version supports service workers. Then we're gonna say navigator.serviceworker.register and a path to a service worker file. So you can't bundle the service worker file into the normal Vite bundle, for example, or whatever bundler you're using, because it will basically need to be a separate file. And a bundler will most likely merge all of your files into one separate one, which will not work for this case. So we'll need to find a workaround for that real shortly. And then we'll also define a scope for the service worker. So basically anything that's under the root of our app, so slash, will go through the service worker and basically be intercepted when it tries to do network requests. And then we just do some error handling to log when something fails so that we can debug it later on. But in our case, all of this should hopefully work. So now, how do we actually register the service worker file if we can't just add it to a normal UI code? Most Vite apps, Webpack apps, etc., have a public directory. And if you are using normal HTML routing, then that's even less of an issue. You can just add a JavaScript file to your normal router, so your normal Nginx config, for example, and just serve this file from there. We'll just use a public directory in Vite and we'll create a new file called serviceworker.js. Remember, the only important part is that it is reachable over the network. And because it will need to be directly reachable over the network and it will need to be interpreted by the browser directly, this cannot be a TypeScript file. It will actually need to be a JavaScript file. So if we want to do types right here, we will need to use JSDoc annotations, but those are really simple here. So don't worry if you haven't used JSDoc yet, it's really simple. And if you're writing a JavaScript app, then yeah, there's no need to worry anyway. And to get started with the service worker, we'll first of all, just try to intercept every request and log out the requested URL just to see that it's now working. So self.addEventListener, self is basically a service worker, and we'll try to intercept every fetch request. For this request, we basically get the event that we can work with to basically control what the fetch will return. So we'll just go ahead now and say event.respondWith. So basically what should the event return to the browser? And we just want to return fetch event.request. So basically we are saying, I want to fetch the requested data from the network and I want to return the fetched response. So basically just the normal behavior that the browser does anyway. The only difference is we'll go ahead and say console.log event.request.url. You will see that there isn't any intelligence right here because the event currently has a type of event. This is something we'll go in shortly using the TypeScript config. For now, this should be totally fine though. And now if we just take a look at the console, we can see that there isn't anything being blocked here. And that is because the service worker was registered after all the requests were made. So it can of course intercept requests that happened before it was instantiated. But we can still see that it worked if we just go into the application right here. And here we'll see the service worker was registered a few seconds ago 
and we can stop it, we can unregister it, we can update it. All of this works perfectly fine, but the most important thing is we can see that it is now running. And if we now just reload the app real quick, we can see all of these URLs were now intercepted by a service worker and locked to the console, but still fetched just normally because that's what we told it to do. So now we can actually already go back into our service worker and implement caching for successful events and using the cache as a fallback for unsuccessful ones. Let's go. But before now actually implementing any logic, let's go ahead and actually add proper types. Trust me, this will go really quickly, so don't worry. So let's head into the TS config and make sure that the include array includes our file. In my case, it doesn't because the public directory isn't in here. So let's just go ahead and say public slash service worker dot JS, just so this file is tracked. And then because it's a JavaScript file, you will also need to make sure that check JS and allow JS are both true. So the TypeScript will also go over these JavaScript files and check them. And now you can actually see that because this is an event, as I mentioned before, all of these values don't normally exist. So let's go into a tsconfig again. And first of all, enable all the types for web workers. And then we'll need to tell it that self is a web worker and not just a normal window. Because right now it thinks that this is a window. A window doesn't have a fetch event. So this is just any kind of event. So let's fix it up real quick. And fixing this is really easy. We'll just create a separate variable with the correct type that is assigned to self. So first of all, we'll need to define the right type for it, which is server worker global scope. And now it complains because window type of global this, so the type of self, is not assignable to service worker global scope. So now we'll just also go ahead and cast self to any to basically override all of these type issues because we know that self isn't of type window, self is a service worker global scope. So let's just override this type using any and assign the self value to type self, which now has a correct type. And now if we just assign type self dot add event listener right here, we can see it's now working and everything is properly typed. Now this is of course a workaround like defining a new variable with the same content but a different type is not ideal most of the time, but this is one of the simplest solutions to get all of this working, so we just go with it. And now let's get to actually implementing our logic. So we'll define an async function that's called do request that will execute our request and cache it. And we'll take in a request as a parameter. We'll just type this parameter as request real quick. And now we can see that our request is a request and we can basically just put all of this fetching into here. So const response equals fetch. We'll await the fetch, of course. Remove this event dot because we pass a request directly. And then for now, we just return the response right here. We will, of course, now need to implement all of the caching right here. But for now, this should be absolutely fine just to see that everything is still working. So. Now we've basically just moved all of this one layer down and we can start implementing our caching. But before doing so, we need to find out how we can find out if a request didn't work. And the easiest solution for that is just wrapping a try catch around here. We will try to just do the fetch and return the result. But in case there's any error, we will need to use the cache. But if the cache doesn't exist, then you can see we still see TypeScript errors right here. Because right now this function either returns undefined, because if we don't return anything, then it's undefined, or it returns a response. But this respond with only takes in responses. So what we can do here is essentially just go ahead and say we throw the error again if we couldn't get any value from our cache. So this way we basically always have a fallback for when the cache doesn't contain a certain file so that the normal error is still thrown to the browser and the browser can display the correct state in the network tab. But of course, we do still need to read from the cache. So let's do that by saying const cache is equal to await caches dot match. And we want to get the matching value for our request right here. So basically, if there's anything that is saved as a response to this specific request, then please give it to me. And if so, so if cached, then please return the cached response. And if there isn't anything cached, then we just throw the error right here. But of course, this will not quite work yet because we aren't really saving anything to the cache up here. So let's implement that real quick and then we should have a fully working system already. And of course, we will put all of this into a separate function again because having it in a separate function allows us to do like filters and stuff for certain requests we might not want to cache, which will make life a lot easier and make the service worker file a lot more tidy. So let's define this function, which takes in our response and our request. Basically, we are putting both of these in here because we need to do a matching between the request and the response in our cache so that we can basically later come get a request just like we did right here and get the response for it. So we, of course, need to pass the request as well. Then we basically create a new cache with the key. 
the key itself isn't as important. The only important thing is that the key is always the same. So we'll just call it electron asset cache. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure that the key is always the same so that you aren't saving values twice or three times in a row and not really overriding them because you of course always want to overwrite your cache with the newest value. And then we can just go ahead and say we want to put a new value in the cache. So we want to say for this request the response is the following value. You can get it later on if you need to. And if you wanted to filter out certain requests like RP requests, for example, then you can just go ahead and say that you filter these requests right here. So something like if uh, request.url.includes slash API or something, then uh, just return or whatever. We are not going to do that. We are going to cache everything just so you see that it's working properly. But now we can just go ahead and use the store cache function right here. And we'll just void store cache. We want the request right here. And we actually want a copy of our response right here because we don't want to manipulate the response in any way when saving it to the cache because otherwise this response will be manipulated as well, which might of course cause unwanted side effects which we want to prevent. So we just clone the response to make sure that none of this will happen. And of course we don't await store to cache, but we void it because we don't actually need to avoid it. We don't need this to happen before the response comes in. And this would just add extra latency so we can basically say, hey, JavaScript, do this whenever you have time to do it. Just please return the response first so that our network request can move on. And once we've done that now, we can basically start up our Electron app again, and we should see that caching is now working properly. We can see we are still logging everything right now because the new service worker has just registered, but the old one has of course logged every request. So if we now just reload, we can see all of this still happens. And that's the case because the new service worker will only come into effect once the app has restarted. So let's just do that real quick, kill the app and restart it again. And now we should see that all of these logs are removed. So talk developer tools and we don't see any logs anymore because the new service worker was just registered. So now there's of course just one more sanity check we need to make, which is of course to just go ahead and kill our web server, reload. And we can see that everything is still working because all of it comes from the cache. And we can actually validate that by going into here. And we just go ahead and lock a formatted string called red request.url from cache, just so we know that a cache was used. So let's just reload everything again. Remember to always start up your web server when changing this because the service worker will of course need to be fetched from the web server. And then we'll just restart our Electron app twice, once to get the new service worker and then to actually get the new service worker running. And if we now just kill the web server and open up the developer tools for our app right here, then we can see that it's reading everything with the cache and also just throwing some errors because the Veed dev server will of course try to create a WebSocket connection for hot module reloading, which it of course can't do if there is no Veed web server. So this is just a little development artifact that you will not need to put much attention to because something live like WebSockets can of course not be cached, but your prod build will probably still work even if you have WebSockets that don't work in that case. So I think this is an awesome improvement and if you want to learn even more about development, then how about check out this video, which YouTube thinks would really help you with your development journey. So have a good day.